greetings to all uh, this uh, presentation is about uh, the subject embedded and real time systems for department of Electric and electronic and communication uh, so the subject code is ec8791 uh, so the end of this uh, this course will be able to understand students uh, will be able to understand about uh, the basic embedded system design and and uh, analysis uh, he or she will be able to understand the characteristics and programming of you know arm processes uh, we'll also talk about uh, the course uh, also has uh, also focuses on the real time operating systems uh, let's start uh, with unit 1 so uh, as per the syllabus uh, from, uh, from an university, the, uh, the title for unit 1 is Introduction to Embed uh, System and Design. So, what is Embedded System? So, uh, when you ask, you know, what is Embedded System, there may be various definitions for Embedded System. So, before going in detail, we will discuss uh, about few definitions. In simple terms to say, Embedded System is a combination of uh, hardware and software um, for specific uh, functions or a function within a larger system. That is, either embed system uh, it's it's a combination of hardware and software that comes as an, a single product, or this may be a sub uh, this embed system may be a sub module that comes as a small uh, part of a larger big product. Therefore. Uh, you know, it's, it's a combination of hardware and software. So, it's a combination of hardware and software designed for some specific applications or uh, functions within a large applications. You know. The systems are programmable with fi fixed functionality. So, like, uh, uh, so we, we program uh, the embedded system with fixed functionality so that it can perform uh, based upon uh, way it is coded. Okay. Uh, one more thing, uh, you may see embedded applications uh, in, in various uh, domain in today's world. For example, right from uh, cell phones that we use in automobile industry, medical equipments, camera, household uh, appliances, so toys. So, so many uh, products that we use today are, um, uh, are you know, uh, are. Uh, are based on embedded system has embedded system functionality uh, uh, integrated in it. So, other definition for embedded system is nothing. So, it's a combination of you know computer processor, uh, memory, input or peripherals that has dedicated functions um, with larger mechanical and or electrical systems. Okay. Uh, so, again, it's a part of uh, it's a part of you know uh, electrical or electronic hardware. You know. And uh, and does uh, some mechanical uh, function. So most of these uh, embedded systems make makes use of microprocessor, and uh, modern you know, embedded applications make use of microcontroller also. So embedded system to say you know it's mainly based on uh, microprocessor or microcontrollers. Okay. Uh, so the first topic that we are going to uh, discuss here is. A complex system and microprocessors. So, like uh, discuss about microprocessors because you know, most of the systems, embedded systems are uh, uh, the basic of embedded system you know, uh, is actually microprocessors. Okay. So, first is uh, what is embedded system or embedded computer system? So, one more definition of this embedded system or embedded computer says, okay, simple definition says, so. It's a device that includes uh, programmable computers, but itself, uh, but not itself intended to be a general purpose computer. For example, you can't say a computer uh, to be an embedded system because it is general purpose and assigned uh, to do multiple tasks. Whereas, you just take the example of fax machine, a fax machine is an, um, is an uh, example of you know, embedded system, fax machine, a clock pulled uh, from a microprocessor. All those things are some examples of embedded computer systems because all those things are designed to um, function for a you know, very specific uh, uh, task. You know? um, uh, 
so this means that you know embedded computer systems uh, design is a very useful skill for many type of product design so in today most of the product okay electronic product next use of this embedded designs as i told you before in automobiles cell phones house <coughs> sorry household um, appliances makes use, use of this you know embedded systems i mean makes use of microprocessors you know for their um, uh, application or for their functionality so uh, designers in many fields okay uh, were able to Id uh, identify where a microprocessor can be used and design a hardware platform with input output devices that can uh, support the required task and implement the so uh, software that performs the required processing so most of the designs you know use um, they try to you know use micro uh, uh, processor or embedded to make the life easier because it can automate things uh, with the way it's programmed so that's why we say you know it includes both um, hardware and software so so uh, microprocessor single chip uh, cpu simple terms you know vlsa as uh, technology has allowed to put the cpu uh, on a single chip right so the first microprocessor was uh, made by intel okay uh, model number is 4004 was designed for embedded application namely calculator it was not a general purpose then again we feel in automobiles in automobiles talking about automobiles use of microprocessors uh, you know, to control the engine so determine where the spark plug can control the you know, fuel air mixture and so on again we use uh, thinking about microprocessor so uh, computers have been you know embedded into uh, applications uh, since the early days of computing um, so right from the day computer uh, uh, was there you know the utility of computer has become an uh, as has been a phenomenal success for uh, uh, computer applications has been a phenomenal success for various products because we use this you know uh, computer embedded systems in various uh, products uh, know, that uh, meet uh, our requirements and uh, know, uh, that is very successful uh, you know uh, for, uh, for for people around uh, so the f um, so most of this you know embedded can be can be talking about is embedding computers you know it's mainly based on micro process because i told you uh, Mm, most of the embedded embedding uh, embedded car systems are based on you know uh, microprocessor microprocessor and also involves microcontrollers so microprocessor single uh, um, chip cpu um, uh, the vlsi technology has allowed uh, to put a complete uh, cpu in a single chip so because of vlsi vlsi technology we are able to put this in there uh, you know cpu uh, in into a single chip uh globally to say the first uh, microprocessor was found by intel uh, its model number is in uh, intel 4004 and it was uh, used in the calculator calculator applications and it's not a uh, um, general purpose a specific purpose but it's so like for performing like arithmetic logical operations so first embedded system application was in calculator and found by intel intel Uh, so again micro processor uh, being used in various other domains as i told you like in automobiles so talking about automobiles you know we use micro processor is used in engine you know to control the uh, flow of uh, uh, the air uh, fuel mixture you know also determine when the spark uh, plug fires and so on so okay uh, so there are various ways in which today embedded systems are used in automobiles in engines also I'll discuss more you know, as we go further in the slides. Uh, other thing, talking about microprocessors, um, microprocessor also comes to different uh, different levels or even sophistications. You have like 8-bit, 16-bit. Then you have microcontrollers that has inbuilt memory. Then we have RISC, mic microprocessor that are used for very intensive 
uh, applications. So based on applications, uh, based on purpose, the kind of microprocessor or microcontroller that we choose do and uh, differ. Uh, next one is characteristics of uh, embedded computer applications. So as I told you, embedded uh, systems and embedded applications uh, has been used in various domains today. And um, here we'll discuss few of the characteristics of these embedded computer applications. Uh, first one is uh, talking about you know, the functionality, software so functionality. They use uh, complex algorithms. You know, the operations performed by these embedded systems or microcontrollers may be very sophisticated, very sophisticated because they use um, complex algorithms. For example, to say, you know, let's take uh, the usage of embedded system in automobile. So automobile in engines, okay, it must uh, perform complicated filtering functions to optimize the performance of the car while minimizing pollution and you know, fuel utilization. So uh, that is one one application. So you no, know, it's not easy to uh, to maintain the performance while while you know minimizing the pollution and fuel utilization. So you know, that is that's why we say embedded. Uh, one of the characteristics, you know, embedded computing applications are. Uh, are used in you know, complex, uh, very complex, and use uh, with, and it has complex algorithms that it, uh, that it has to deal with. Next, uh, next point talking about is next point is you no know, user interface. Uh, microprocessors are frequently used to control complex user interfaces you know, that may include multiple menus and many options. Uh, the moving, for example, like the moving map in GPS, Google Propulsion Systems, now it's a good examples of sophisticated user interface. Okay. And then the next point is real time. Uh, so you, be, you should be ab uh, able to use uh, the microprocessor should be able to perform in real time. Embedded system should be able to perform real time basis. Okay, so it has to perf perform in real time basis. If the data isn't ready uh, by a certain deadline, okay, the system breaks or in some case uh, failures to meet the deadline is unsafe and even dangerous to our life. Right. So um, uh, the the beauty of uh, uh, are the significant of this ember system is it should be able to perform well in real time okay without any delay okay so sometimes missing delay uh, or missing deadlines okay if any delay occurs you know doesn't uh, it may it may you know uh, risk it may be a, it may cause greater risk depends upon the applications you know missing a deadline does uh, does uh, doesn't create a safety problem but uh, uh, for some applications, you know, it's not it's unhappy to customers. Like if somebody wants to buy an uh, buy an embedded product, and if does not you know meets this application, does 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 meet the requirement, but it causes delay uh, in its action. You know, uh, we can't say that a product will be highly reliable, and you know, people may not be interested in buying the product. So next kind of six, it should be well, it's it, it should work on real time basis. And you know it should it should be very accurate and it should be very prompt to work on on time. Okay, the next point to uh, share with you is uh, multi rate. Okay, um, not to, not only must operations to be computed by deadline, but many embedded systems have uh, several real time ongoing uh, uh, on at the same time. Okay, so. They have multiple functions. For example, if you are running, if you are running an application, you know, uh, application, there may be multiple functions that run behind. Okay, they uh, they may be simultaneously control some operations is run at a slow rate and other may uh, uh, higher rate. Let's uh, but uh, mm, let's uh, discuss about uh, and a small example here. Okay, for example, let's uh, discuss an example of multi-rate behavior. Let's take an video and audio portion of a multimedia streaming. Okay. Uh, so if, if we say that video streams faster and uh, audio person uh, sorry video streams slower and audio person video streams slower faster so though if, even if though uh, uh, even if both uh, streams are different rate while we playing while we play f to the end user you know the multimedia should be able to synchronize uh, synchronize closely okay uh, and uh, and perform accordingly. And perform accordingly. So only then, um, only then we can say, okay, uh, it has meet the expectation of um, uh, the end user. Maybe if 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 the if the audio uh, uh, plays in advance, 
because it's downloaded faster in the video, you know. It is something that is not accepted by the end user. You know, it may fail to meet the deadline. So, so though, it, uh, though that's actually an example of multi-rate. So, though you know we have multiple functions uh, that you know that may be downloaded at different rates, but it should be delivered to the end user uh, in a synchronized manner. In, in a synchronized manner. Okay, that's that's the point. Next one is uh, manufacturing cost. Talking about many. Um, can you manufacturing cost you know uh, so if, it, if you take any applications uh, the manufacturing cost is very very important parameter because higher the cost you can expect uh, more uh, clients after the product so these manufacturing cost mainly depends upon various factors like the kind of microprocessor used the amount of memory required and the types of improved devices so less of the manufacturing cost and either quality you can expect uh, uh, more uh, kind of sale in the market okay uh, so this manufacturing cost mainly depends upon as I told you the hardware components um, no no like uh, and the memory required and types of input devices and so on talking about power and next uh, the factor six that we have to look into in the number system is power and energy so power consumption do directly affects the uh, cost of the hardware because higher the uh, power supply may be necessary you know uh, Less the uh, less higher the challenge you can say because any embedded system should be designed should be efficient to work with low power consumption uh, because uh, 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 because power cons if higher the power consumption you know, uh, uh, you know people uh, may find it difficult to you know buy because it may increase the power so. In real time usage, uh, power consumption do affects uh, affects the embedded system uh, because also that energy consumption affects the battery life, uh, which is an important in many applications such as heat consumption. Uh, because uh, more the energy is conserved, okay, the battery, for example, if, if I, the device is oper operates in the battery and more energy, energy is con uh, conserved, okay. So people um, and and imagine you have to replace a battery maybe for each hour. People may not prefer using such kind of applications and a, and a battery powered device. So uh, more efficient the product or more uh, no more less of the power consumption. You know people uh, it it may be more usable. Uh, you know in the global market. Uh, so. Then next, why uh, why use microprocessors? Are uh, why is uh, microprocessors preferred? Uh, let's discuss about a few points here. Why uh, microprocessors are preferred or other uh, uh, preferred in embedded systems? Like the first one is microprocessors are very efficient way to implement in digital systems. Okay, it's very easy to um, use a microprocessor in a digital system domains. Okay, that's one reason. The second point that we can say is you know it makes it easily easier to design families of products that were built to provide various features such as you know, different price points that can be extended to provide new features to keep a rapidly changing markets so you know like uh, uh, no it's pr easy to uh, uh, provide a design products uh, uh, or give some extended features by just uh, uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. By doing some modifications in the microprocessor that are that are of same kind of same fam same family, okay, that's one major reason. The other few points, the way microprocessors are widely used are, you know, the first one is uh, microprocessor uh, can execute program very efficiently. You know, uh, for example, your processor that executes pro uh, one instruction per cycle for most of the time. There are some high pro processors that execute several instructions per cycle so if, you know it's for one clock cycle and several insects are executed it, it makes uh, it makes execution rate faster and you know you can expect the out output um, uh, to be delivered faster than before so then the, the to add more point to it microprocessor you know I can, uh, can highly optimize in a sense uh, a microprocessor are, uh, manufacturers spent great deal of money to make the CPUs run very faster. Okay, 
so we have large amount of design involved in which makes the system very faster and you know uh, highly co highly uh, complicated applications are today made faster because of fire and processors and we have multiple quad core we have four processors in one chip and because several design technologies are involved that is making the life of uh, uh, life faster and thus finding uh, applications in various uh, domains uh, domains are, are finding solutions uh, for problems in various domains so this microprocessor widely used we'll also uh, uh, then we'll discuss about what are the various challenges uh, in embed embedded system design or uh, for example I, uh, we just talked why is microprocessor important so um, as we use this microprocessor as we use this uh, embedded system as we also said that embedded system uh, is found in various domains so as we use this embedded system applications embedded computer applications in various domains let's discuss what are few challenges that we uh, that uh, uh, the embedded uh, embedded system design has So the first uh, challenge that we are going to talk about is how much uh, hardware do we need, okay. So this is one of the great, uh, a great uh, or important thing that we need to discuss uh, while we design, you know, a numbered system. Because uh, when we talk about hardware numbered system, you know, it includes uh, the type of process that we use, it includes the memory, it includes the peripheral devices and, you know, the input output devices like uh, and much more so uh, the 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 usage of optimum amount of hardware is, is highly essential because um, uh, the choice of hardware or uh, optimum amount of hardware is essential because uh, you know uh, too little hardware uh, makes the system failure or makes the system uh, fail to meet a deadline whereas um, higher more the more hardware or if you use excess usage of hardware in an embedded system may increase the power consumption and you know the product becomes more expensive so optimum usage of hardware is is something that we need to it's very challenging and and we need to make the right choice while using the hardware so two things is minimum use may fail to meet the deadline and maybe uh, maybe reduce the reliability and uh, maximum use may increase the cross and you no know, increase the power consumption so we need to work on it so how optimum uh, should my hardware mm, should be used in that particular application you need to think about this uh, that's one challenge the, se the second challenge we are going to talk about is how do we meet deadlines so if you run an embedded application as so i told you it should perform in real time and how fast it, um, how fast it can how efficient it can meet the deadline so the uh, the, the the main uh, the one one good solution okay to meet the deadline is you know uh, it's to speed up the hardware you know so that the program runs faster so if the <coughs> if the if the hardware is made faster and the execution is made faster okay so the amount of uh, uh, number of instructions it executes um, per second will become more and the execution and you know it, you can you can make the, make uh, the system work faster. Of course, there are several challenges, uh, you know, uh, because of increase in price, because of using, uh, mm, uh, yeah, because of increasing price and other uh, major challenges do exist. So, one good solution is to execute things faster and make uh, compile the program as fast as possible because so that we can meet the deadline. Next, how much? Uh, the next, the third challenge here that we need to we will discuss about is how do we minimize power consumption? For example, in battery power apl application, okay, power consumption is very important. Okay, even in uh, non-battery applications, excessive power consumption, um, excess usage of power results in you know, heat dissipation. So one way to um, okay, one way to make a digital system consume less power is to you know make the system run slowly. Okay, if it uh, if the system is made to run slowly, the amount of uh, heat dissipated is slow, and the power consumption can be reduced. Okay. Um, however, the next challenge is uh, is how do we design uh, for upgradability? For example, you take a cell phone. Uh, maybe you take smartphones. You take Samsung. 
maybe two years back they would have released a phone a smartphone but today you know it's it's actually changed but today do we have the same phone same phone with same model no right each year or each six months <coughs> they release new models because you know uh, you know that's how the trend is you know people people uh, prefer buying you know new uh, new upgraded versions if you take any if, if we take example of car or anything any electronic products you know as uh, time goes on uh, uh, the products are getting upgraded so i should also able to uh, you know when i design an embed system i should i should also think about the upgradeability how well i can upgrade this embed system or is the process i use to to next newer version or or do i have to replace the entire embedded processor for new application if if i have to replace the entire uh, processor for new application again it's it's going to be a huge challenge in in, in the and a huge wastage of in hardware hardware so hardware hardware that are used because new versions if it if it does not uh, upgrade or is not scalable uh, to more advanced features advanced features is definitely going to affect uh, uh, I think the sale or the increase in hard um, you know uh, I like the scale and it's going to um, cause a huge wastage of money so uh, and while designing we should also think about how well or uh, I can upgrade this to a newer version maybe in the next 6 months or uh, or as the uh, time goes on <coughs> the large the last the another uh, key point the last key point that we we'll discuss is the reliability maybe if you buy an in the internet application how much are you sure we we are going to definitely buy a product based upon the reliability right does it really work well okay if you buy a product you always think does it really does it meet my expectation or does it really work well no this is a question that we have in our mind is so embedded systems when you buy an embedded application reliability one of the you know most important thing so reliability is important in while selling a product right because when a customer when a customer will buy a, will buy a product only if if he found the product to be reliable right so um, other thing is we can't say uh, that if there is any bug okay if we wait until if there is any bug uh, uh, bug that we fi- uh, found in the system okay if we wait until we have the running uh, uh, system and try to eliminate the bug will be too late all right so we, for some applications we can't fix a bug uh, after the system stop uh, stop running so we have to run the bug on real time basis right that's more important so these are so in general to say this is this talks about reliability how well the product is reliable how well i can make the customer meet the expectation of the customer how well are i can how well it is reliable to the customer so that the customer by the product so these are some few challenges uh in an embedded computer uh, system design so in uh, this slide to we'll discuss about few challenges that are based on you know uh, the nature of uh, embedded computing machines like uh, the first one is you know complex testing right exercising an embedded system is you know generally more difficult um, than uh, typing in some data so we need to run a uh, real machine in order to generate a proper data so the timing of uh, the data is often important meaning that we cannot you know separate the testing of an embedded computer uh, from the machine in which it is uh, embedded the second limitation is uh, limited observability and controllability for example the main challenge is most of this embedded application you know does not come with uh, any um, any keyboards or screen okay there are do there are few applications where you know where you have lead display screens so you can just we have uh, you know what's happening but sir some applications we uh, you know uh, there are some the signal communications within itself or if you do any bug there are signal communications which you can you know you cannot visualize a uh, things to screen or if you, you know you cannot uh, there are no screen uh, keyboards to type or check anything right it 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 work on itself so uh, other thing is um, that's why we call as you know uh, limited observability 
second one is uh, uh, limited controllability that is in real time applications okay if uh, we have just started the application right um, we may not be in public in some applications in applications we may not be able to uh, easily stop the system to see what is going on, going on inside right once when you start stop the start the applications we cannot see some what's happening inside the signals are getting communicated but we cannot see what is uh, typically happening uh, inside doing the process we have to stop the embed system you know to look in it this is um you know, that is why we say we, have, we say it's uh, there's, there's limited uh, observability and controllability second is uh, the third point is restricted development environment for example okay you have designed a code and you have embedded into the uh, microprocessor and you, use, you are using it in, a, in, a, in real time. Now you, you have to do some uh, modifications, corrections. So what you have to do, you, you can't work in the microprocessor directly. You know? Now you have to take the microprocessor, again configure with the PC, you write the code in the PC, again embed it into the uh, microprocessor. You know? or to, de to debug the code, indirectly to say, to debug the code, or if you do any corrections in the code, you, uh, you have to rely on um, uh, some other run machines like personal computer workstations, you know, uh, workstations. So, like, you cannot directly um, uh, work in debug in the embedded system, you have to depend on some other applications um, to work with. That's what we call as restricted development environment. These are some challenges. Uh, that we have seen or oh, okay seen in the topic uh, let me just uh, summarize of this presentation we have we have just seen about a definition of uh, what is embedded system we have, we have definition of embedded systems then we just uh, started talking about uh, the complex systems what is embedded system embedded systems we saw about embed, embedding computers we said uh, major of applications now computer is embedded, embed, embedded is, yeah, microprocessor embedded. We saw a few characteristics of embedded computer applications, how it should be. Then we discuss about why microprocessors are widely used in embedded uh, computing. Then we saw the challenges. We also discussed about you know, the nature of, uh, yeah, uh, of challenges uh, because of the embedded computing machines. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for watching my uh, presentation.